so I got a lift for free. <sighs> Garage time. Okay, I'm really excited about this lift. You know, here's, here's the thing. I wasn't necessarily looking for a lift. I've got a lot of work done on this car with my sort of DIY tire stands I built. It lifted it maybe about a third of this or maybe almost, yeah, probably about a third of this height. And I've done full undercoat, chassis strengthening, chassis straightening. I've done suspension pan replacement. I've done, you know, oil cooler modifications and all sorts of stuff, including full respray on the bottom. But uh, the story on this is one of the YouTube subscribers here reached out to me and said, hey, I moved into a bigger place and I got some different lifts. I got some taller four post lifts. Would you be interested in a two post lift that I don't need anymore? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. He said, just drive down and, uh, and come get it. So I was there, I think the next day and got to meet Rich, awesome car collection and great, great car guy. So, you know, thanks so much, Rich, for this lift. It's uh, obviously working out great in my garage. I'm gonna take you through all the steps I took to install it and get it up and running. A two post lift like this is only as strong as it's anchored to the concrete. The anchors are really important. And this is where I ran into a little bit of an uneasy feeling. Okay, this anchor right here is the expandable anchors that I tried first. Now this one actually set just fine. It's torqued to 90 foot pounds and it's secure. These holes over here have epoxy anchors in them now. So what happened was I, I pushed in the expandable anchors and drew them up and this one slipped a little bit and I got nervous and then this one here completely slipped all the way out. So what I ended up doing is hammering those anchors all the way through. This concrete's about four and a half inches thick. I ended up hammering all the way through to the dirt below and then epoxying these anchors in. And so I'm only left with one of the original expandable anchors. It's working just fine. And then everything else is epoxy anchored. This number 113 is the number of inches between the ends of the lift. And that I think is what's gonna fit my car the best. This green line mates up with this green line over here just to make sure these are installed nice and square. 
The other nice thing about these anchors are they're completely flush because I cannot leave the uprights in place permanently, otherwise I can't get the cars in the garage. So these uprights are removable and they store here in the side of my garage. Doesn't actually take up too much space. Those right there are the lift arms and then this contraption is the hydraulic pump that has quick disconnects on it so it's real easy to move it out of the way. Let me set up the uh, camera on the tripod and I'll show you how it installs. Right, the torque wrench is set to 60 pounds. Let's see how it does. Looks nice and level. I did put a shim on this lower bolt just to take some of the wiggle out of it but this is uh, straight up and down. Nice. And then we just plug the pump in to an extension cord. And see if it works. Yeah, looks like it's going up. Nice. Okay, that's the Max Travel. And you guys, I got really lucky. It just touched my shelf here. Let me show you. So this side is in its max position, as high as the rams will go. And then right up here, I have this shelf in my rafters that basically this ram just barely touched it just pushed it up just a, like an eighth of an inch. You can see it's still moving right up above it. So that is the max height I could go on this. And then the other thing I need to think about is the car is gonna be going you know, right here. If it goes max height, it's probably gonna run into that light. So I'm thinking about moving at least the fluorescent light over to the other side, because I don't have one over there. So I'm gonna move that right now just to be safe. And obviously I'll watch it when the car goes up.
I wanted to show you guys all the primer dust that's on top of this shop light. It's like an eighth inch thick. Yikes. This is going right outside. So the cool thing about these arms is they expand outward like that. And then they also pivot, but where it pivots here, it has a little release. So you can unlock it with those teeth and then pivot it around and then lock it back in. These pads are removable, uh, but I'm gonna probably need the lowest ones, obviously, because my car's low. Nice. Let's lower it down and put a car on it. My first drive. So now we just need to find a way to position these jack pads and it's pretty simple on these cars. This rear pad can go right about here. I could lift it by this because this has been reinforced, but right about here is, is perfect on the rear. Okay, at the front here, this is the section of the, the floor pan that I repaired. This was all crushed in in the past. And so this is okay to lift on this again. It's just that you want to lift it in all four corners and not just put a single jack on it. So I don't think it's going to rebend again. And normally I would roll the car forward a little bit because it's normally really heavy on the rear. But because there's nothing in the rear at all, it's actually a little bit heavier in the front. So I have it balanced, you know, roughly here with the driver. It's going to be close enough to get it to lift up. Let's give it a try. Okay, I think it just made contact with the car. So let's double check the points. Yeah, that's good. No problem. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close my overhead door because the door is pretty low. Just don't wanna make sure, make sure I don't hit it. Now remember the rear tires aren't drooping down because they have some solid shocks on there. The front tires are drooping down a lot because they have the struts on there and they're loose, no spacers. So it looks like the car is leaning forward but it's actually not. Feels pretty secure to me. I'm not seeing anything going up with the anchors. Anchors are still tight. One thing I forgot to do is disconnect it from the winch. Okay.
So it's really nice. This is much higher than I was able to go before and it's not even at the maximum height. So just a real quick check on the mounts. Nothing is bending here, by the way. I'm getting on a ladder on this, which is pretty cool. So I have about, with that LED light there, I have about, um, well, there's a little bracket hanging down. It's about four or five inches. The light has about, I'd say eight inches. And then that's a handle to my bike. Plenty of room there, probably also eight inches. Now the lift can go, Remember, this portion of the lift was touching the shelf, so it can only go another inch or inch and a half. These are the safety supports here, so I'm gonna relocate them down to its highest position. Right there, and then I'm gonna let it sit down on those so it's not under hydraulic pressure. All right, so that's it. Fully lifted, it barely fits in my garage. It fits absolutely perfect for my space. Couldn't have planned it um, any better. I didn't do any planning, this was just a gift. So the big thing to watch out for in this garage is gonna be if we open the big door right there, it's gonna run right into the back window or probably the roof and scratch it all up. So that is no good. Definitely need to either unplug the garage door opener or put a box over the switch so I don't inadvertently hit the car with the door. Let's take a little tour underneath, shall we? So you can see here that's a uh, oil tank kind of mocked in place for the 911 engine. There's my solid shocks, which is why things aren't drooping down. Um, probably going to work on the brake lines tomorrow. Here's some stainless lines that I've just kind of held in place. This wiring here is mostly just for the engine and some of the stuff I'm not going to be using. But you can see the routing of the wire harness right up to there. A few things are finished here in the tunnel, like the brake lines and the fuel lines. Starting to get a little dusty underneath here. Here's a good look at the pickup points on the rear, right here, right, up, right below the, uh, the main torsion bar. Undercoating is still holding up really well, even though I haven't gone anywhere. And then here at the front, the gas tank is in there, but it's just uh, covered up with some, some stuff. Rebuild steering rack. Rebel racing bushings there in the front turbo tie rods. I'm going to be modifying the spindles in a future episode, so they're not been, they haven't been finished yet. This big chain is what I tow the car in with. Here's a good look at the front of the car with its mouth. This is the oil cooler mouth to add for uh, more airflow. Front mounted oil cooler. You can see the, the brakes are, are mocked up in there. And the good news is they do, those calipers do fit within the 15 inch wheel envelope, even with cookie cutters, which is pretty amazing. Sparco seats are at least the driver's seats in place, sitting nice and low. Got the steering wheel in. Everything's looking pretty good, you guys. So here in the engine bay, I still need to paint this hatch panel Need to paint that yellow. We're ready to bolt the deck lid on anytime. I did get the wiring harness that finishes off the rear here, so um, I can get the taillights connected now up to that harness.
So there's a really interesting difference here between, you know, yellow, this is Bahama yellow, and this is the lift yellow. Really big difference. My yellow on the car is very much more orange brown versus this is safety yellow, almost fluorescent yellow. Really big difference in yellows. Clearly this lift is gonna be a huge time saver and help, especially with the upcoming engine install and transaxle install. It's gonna really make things uh, very simple. And I can't thank you enough, Rich. This is an awesome um, thing that you've done. And I just think this is really indicative of the whole Porsche community in general. Super nice people. I've met a lot of great people um, kind of before and after YouTube on this. But Saturday, I'm gonna be working on the brakes, I believe, I'm gonna to try to get the brakes finished up. I have a few loose items on the steering to tighten up and just keep getting the car ready so the engine can go in very shortly. Stay tuned, thanks again.